In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make this gesture control robot using Arduino and PAJ7620 gesture sensor. I will explain what the sensor is, how to detect various hand gestures and how to control this robot using this sensor. Let's get started. PAJ7620 gesture sensor is a quick and easy way to add gesture control to your Arduino or Raspberry Pi project. This tiny little sensor can recognize various hand gestures such as moving your hands up, down, left, right, forward, backward, clockwise, anticlockwise and waving. It employs an input proximity sensor which can sense approaching and departing objects. This is a simple board, connections are pretty easy and you won't need more than 2 minutes to set this up. You can use any Arduino board like Uno, Nano, Micro or Maker Series board but here we will be using Vmos D1 Mini. For this project, I will be using HC12 wireless module for sending data from the sensor to the robot. It is one of the most commonly used wireless module in the field of robotics and other remote control applications. It is very easy to use and have a very long range communication of up to 1 km line of sight. I hope you have seen my previous video on the remote control robot, the Robotin 6. It is an off-road 6-wheel drive crawler which can be remotely controlled using an Arduino remote controller. Here also we will be using the same robot, only thing different here will be the code which will be uploading to the robot's Arduino. If you haven't seen that yet, click the link above and watch it first. Now we will set this up. One more thing guys, before going further, if you find this video useful, consider supporting my channel by giving this video a like and subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below. I would really appreciate it. First, the transmitter. We will set this up on the breadboard. Connections are pretty simple, simply connect V into 3.3V, ground to ground, SCL to SCL and SDA to SDA. Then we will connect HC12 wireless module. You will find all the connection diagrams in my blog which you will find in the description. Now the code. This code is similar to the one we used in the previous tutorial. This uses I2C protocol to read data from the sensors and pass it on to the serial pins where we connect HC12 wireless module. I decided to make a high current DC motor driver shield for Arduino Nano that will be able to drive multiple motors simultaneously and independently and at the same time provide enough current to drive all of them without generating much heat. Now let's take a look at the circuit. I used an amazing PCB designer called Altium to make my own PCBs for my projects and believe me guys, it's very easy to create your own PCBs using Altium. If you are a DIY electronics enthusiast, this is gonna be really useful for you. Altium is an amazing PCB designer with so many user friendly tools and amazing features like centralized cloud storage, online collaboration with which you can design and create your own PCBs for your hobby projects or share your ideas across your network. You can download the free trial version from the description down below. You can also get a 6 months full license if you are a student. So make sure you check it out. The idea here is to connect two L293D motor drivers in parallel. This is called L293D piggybacking. Let me explain it in simple terms. Let's take a closer look at L293D motor driver IC. L293D is a reduced type of edge spirit circuit in the form of an IC. L293D motor driver IC allows DC motors to drive on either direction without changing the physical circuit. It is an IC with 8 pins on each side which contains two free head split circuits which means we can control two motors separately using a single IC. The left side of the IC deals with one head split and the right side deals with the other. There is a pin called enable pin for each head split circuit. The head split will work only if the enable pin is set to logic 1. Due to the high current flowing through the circuit, there are 4 ground pins employed in this IC. Of course, l 293 d is the most widely used motor driver IC among hobbyists and engineers to drive motors in their projects. But there are certain limitations to this IC when it comes to high load or high current motors. One of them is peak current. The maximum current it can provide over a single channel is 600 mA or 1.2 ampere peak. With this current, L293D cannot drive multiple DC motors that draws huge amount of current. 
L293D piggyback configuration is an easy way to double the current as well as the power of L293D motor driver IC. So, the entire thought is to connect another L293D chip straightforwardly over one IC pin to pin and thereby connecting them in parallel. This puts the two chips in parallel mode so the voltage will remain the same as before but the current increases. After piggybacking two of them together, they will provide output with 1.2 ampere persistent current and a peak current of 2.4 ampere for brief periods. That is exactly what we did here. Here, you can see a pair of L293D motor drivers connected in parallel over here and another pair of ICs connected in parallel over here. So, the first pair ICs drive the first two motors and the second pair of ICs drive the next two motors. All the inputs of L293D motor driver ICs are connected to GPIO pins and all the enabled pins are connected to the PWM pins of Arduino. For IC set 1, we use D2, D4 and D3 to control motor 1 and D7, D8 and D5 to control motor 2. For IC set 2, we use D12, D13 and D6 to control motor 3 and A0, A1 and D9 to control motor 4. Other than that, I have added some header pins over here which can be used to connect other sensors and modules to this board directly and some more here that provide 5V and ground connections which can be used to power additional circuits to this board for further expansion. Also, here is where we connect the HC12 wireless module which I will be using to control the board remotely. Also, I have added some indicator LEDs over here for easy troubleshooting. Once the circuit was finished and tested, I designed a compact PCB using Altium where I can fix all the components neatly. Here you can see the routing is there on both sides of the board which means it's a dual layer PCB. I will provide links to the Gerber file in the description. Now I will give you a small tip that might save a lot of your money. One important thing that you should keep in your mind before buying a DC motor for your project is its specifications such as voltage requirements, current requirement as well as the torque that you require. As you know, all DC motors are not the same. Some will be driven by 5V, some will be driven by 3.3V, 12V, 36V. It all depends on the torque as well as the size. And for that reason, it is very important for us to understand the specification of the DC motor as well as the components that will drive the DC motor. And for that reason, before adding components to your circuit, it's always a good idea to understand everything about the components such as the availability, specification, the price, etc. And for this, I will recommend a free site called Octopart, which is an electronic component search engine from where you will get complete information about all the components that you will need for your project. You can also use Octopart to find the components that meets your requirement. You can even purchase the component by clicking the link there itself. It's a free solution for almost all of your programs regarding components and you will get everything in one place. This is also going to be really useful for you guys so make sure you check it out. Now you are good to go. Now about coding the Arduino Nano for driving the motors. Here we are using Arduino Nano and we are not wasting any pins here. We have all the GPIO pins connected to these headers so that if you want to connect any sensors or other external modules to these robots, you can do that easily with header cables like this. To control motor 1, we can use pin D2 and D4 and PWM pin D3 to control the speed. To control motor 2, we can use pin D7 and D8 and PWM pin D5 to control the speed. Like that, to control motor 3, we can use pin D12 and D13 and PWM pin D6 to control the speed. To control motor 4, we can use pin A1 and A0 and PWM pin D5 to control the speed. With this shield, you should be able to drive almost all the DIY robots that have up to 4 wheels easily. Now on to the code. First we read the data coming from the AC12 module to a variable named input. This input contains the string which was sent by the transmitter module. You can now use this variable to drive your robot the way you want. You will find all the code, schematics and related links in my blog. You will find the link in the description, so check that out. If you are an Arduino enthusiast, you will surely like my 6-wheel drive off-road crawler with suspension using Arduino. Click here to see the demo. Subscribe my channel for more updates. Take care guys, see you next week.